guest for the evening, Sheikh Mohammed Al Nagawi, international da'wa trainer. Sheikh Mohammed, salam alaikum. It's really a pleasure to Tala have you with us on Halakha. The pleasure is mine to be here. Yeah, it's such a special day uh, of Arafah to all of uh, Muslims all around the world. It's a special day for uh, Muslims who didn't attend Hajj and also more special for uh, people who are going to Hajj or they are in Hajj now. So will you please tell us the importance of Arafah Day and what is the story behind it, please? Thank you. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa ala rasulillah. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, and we send salutation upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and all those who follow his footsteps till the day of judgment. Uh, thank you, brother, for your question, that uh, what is the day of Arafah and what is the story behind it? Well, the day of Arafah is the ninth day uh, from the month of Dhul Hijjah, and the, the, this is the lunar Islamic year, or the month uh, where people go for Hajj. Now, what is the story behind it and why we call it Arafah? Uh, there are a couple of stories actually behind this name Arafah and uh, I would like to just brief yourself and myself and our dear uh, viewers here that first of all, uh, the word Arafah, coming from the word Araf, as we know in Arabic, Araf means you know, to know, recognize something and, and uh, something is known. So this is the word Arafah is. So basically the first thing, well, the people go to that mountain called mountain of Arafah and they admit يعترفون, اعتراف, يعني they admit to Allah Almighty of their negligence of their sins and they are asking Allah to forgiveness so this exactly. is the ulama actually the scholar says that this is the first uh, thing that this is the Arafah that's why, that's why they call it Arafah and number two as well when uh, the uh, angel uh, Jibreel alayhi uh, salam, Jibreel Gabriel, peace be upon him, uh, was teaching uh, Ibrahim what to do, what not to do, the, the rituals. So after every step, after every ritual, he used to say, A'arafta, A'arafta. Uh, do you know now? Do you know what to do? So, exactly. so that's why they called it Arafah, you know, that you know, Ibrahim was uh, being, being uh, taught and he learned what to do and how to do. Exactly. Another uh, interesting story of Adam and Hawa. This is when Allah Almighty uh, descend Adam and Hawa from the heaven, uh, our, uh, our first father and, and a mother, you know, Adam and Eve. So when they came, descended, uh, Hawa descended actually in Arabian Peninsula, which is nowadays we can call it Saudi Arabia. And Adam uh, uh, ascended in a place called uh, now Sri Lanka or Sri Lanka. So what happened that Adam alayhi salam searching for his wife going all the way so he walked all the way from Sri Lanka all the way to Saudi Arabia. Now also it says that the mother Eve Hawa she descended specifically at the place called Jeddah. That's why it's called Jeddah. You know in Arabic what's the Jeddah means right? Grandmother, right? So this is the the significant behind the when we say Jeddah, you know. So Jeddah means the grandmother where our mother Hawa was descended. But they all met in the mountain or the area of Arafah. They saw each other. Of course, th th this didn't happen in a day or two, right? It took like long time for Adam to come all the way. So when they met one another, they recognized one another. Arafah, you know, they, kn they knew yeah. one another. So they met. So this is the, the three story, or yeah. four different uh, narrations of the scholars uh, of the history, the uh, historic uh, you know, fact that these are the things. Either first, people are... Uh, asking Allah Almighty, admitting uh, from uh, of their sins, asking forgiveness. Uh, number two, uh, people as well. Uh, the fourth thing is that people also know one another there. So imagine, for example, you're my friend, you're my neighbor, or something like that. I don't know that you're going for Hajj. You don't know I'm go going for Hajj, but it's the only one place where in the in the mountain, well, all these millions of people are there. So you know by chance, oh. Brother Muhammad is there, you will say, oh, Naqawi is there. So it's like, you know, Arafah each other. Exactly. So these are the stories, but nothing is clear cut from the Quran, or from the Hadith. But these are the uh, explanations of the ulama, of the scholars. Exactly. And one of the things our viewers are wondering, especially people who are curious to know more about uh, pilgrimage and hajj and people who are new uh, to Islam, they just embrace Islam. They're wondering because when they think about uh, Mecca or hajj, they immediately think about uh, Al Kaaba. Yeah. But when you say Arafah mm. and the mountain of Arafah, it might make them uh, wondering more to know more about the location. 
of uh, Arafah. So what exactly uh, Arafah, the mountain of Arafah, and where is it exactly? Thank you for your question. Uh, as you said, yes, it might for new Muslims and even even born Muslim, you know, those, they, they have no idea what Who is Arafah. Who didn't Arafa. go to Hajj. They didn't yeah. go to Hajj, they have no idea. So basically, yes, Kaaba is Kaaba. We know it's, it's our direction where we, you know, pray to uh, or to, to, towards uh, the Kaaba. But the mountain of Arafah is almost 20 kilometers away from Mecca. It is I in, a, in a desert. It, it's a mountain where the Prophet, peace be upon him, and before Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, uh, Prophet Ibrahim, uh, salam, peace be upon him, he is the one who stand there and he raised his hand and asking Allah for the forgiveness and asking you know, Allah to accept his repentance and things like that. Uh, all, all kind of dua you know, that he used to, or uh, supplication that he used to do. And of course, after that, uh, Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, he is the one who used to make the dua. So where exactly it is? Approximately 20 kilometers away from Kaaba. And it is in a, in a desert. There's a mountain which is a little you know, uh, high, in a high place. And this is where the people usually go and ask Allah Almighty to you know, uh, accept their Umrah and accept their Hajj and accept all their deeds. Exactly. And we can uh, notice, Sheikh Muhammad, especially on the day of uh, Arafah, most of the mothers or the ladies, they turn on TV and watch uh, uh, the day of Arafah and also the Hajj and pilgrimage and the um, practices there for uh, Hajj. So we're wondering about uh, also when they're watching TV, they're mostly fasting. Yes. Because uh, it is Sunnah to fast on the day uh, uh, of Arafah. Arafa, yes. So uh, will you please tell us the benefits of fasting on the day of Arafah? Sure. Now, as you said, see, uh, this also shows that not only those who are in Arafah, they will know one another. As I said at the beginning, you know, that, you know, they might araf one another, it araf uh, on, on one another. As you said, the mothers and people are watching, they will say, oh, our neighbor, Abu <laughs> Flan, <Exactly. laughs> oh, our neighbor, so-and-so. Yeah. They'll be lucky if they took a picture of them on the phone. Uh, subhanallah, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that could be the one of the <laughs> case. So even those who are not even in Umrah, they might recognize other people that, oh, this is our friend, this is our neighbor, so-and-so. Now, as you know, as, as you said, fasting on the day of uh, Arafah. Uh, what is the reward of fasting of the day of Arafah and, and why we fast on the day of Arafah? First of all, as you said, it's a sunnah. Uh, and when we say it's a sunnah and it's uh, all uh, to make it clear for the, the viewers, when we say sunnah, what exactly it means? It means it's the sunnah in Arabic terms. It means the way or the path. Exactly. So when we say sunnah, means it's a path or it's a way of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. He did something. The practice. The practice that he did and we are also obliged and uh, of course because we love him we want to do yeah. something that he did. So he fasted on the day of Arafah and he asked his companion to you know fast on the day of Arafah and as usual the Sahaba the companion used to ask uh, what is the benefit uh, Ya Rasulullah what is the you know significant what is the and reward. The reward, also, the reward yeah. also or fasting on that day. So he said Fasting on the day of Arafah, you kafir sin al madiyah wal baqiyah. Fasting on the day of Arafah, it will wipe all your sins of the previous year and the current year. So imagine it's only yes, one, uh, one, day. Uh, one day fasting, but your two years' sins will be completely wiped out. So it is highly recommended actually for me, for you, for our brothers and sisters, dear viewers, that to fast that, you know, less than 24 hours, I, I would say, you know. Uh, to, to just get closer to Allah Almighty. Exactly. And also the Dhul Hijjah, the month of uh, Dhul Hijjah and uh, uh, the importance of Hajj because in the, in the month of uh, Dhul Hijjah of the Hijri calendar, Islamic Hijri calendar. Yeah. Also, the, the day of Arafah is the most important before uh, Eid. So we, you, we mentioned and we discussed the uh, fasting and the importance and the benefits and the rewards of uh, fasting in the day of uh, Arafah, Shaykh Muhammad. But we would, know, we would like to know the other recommendations for the day of Arafah. Is it only about fasting or there's other recommendations? Thank you for your question because this is really important for me before anyone else. And then for you, for the brothers and sisters, the viewers and everyone. Day of Arafah, because first of all, let's, let's take it gradually. Day of Arafah, first of all, fasting on that day, as I said, it will wipe your sins of two years, the previous and the current. Now, I, I just would like to give a small brief, you know, our, our system on daily basis. It's not 24 hours, first of all, that we've, we, we have to fast. Out of 24 hours, take out eight hours, that is your sleep. 
then take two to three hours that includes your uh, breakfast, lunch, uh, dinner, coffee break, brunch, uh, all together, right? Then take another one hour, chit and chat and, and this and that and whatsoever. It's nothing. Believe me, it's nothing. So it's, it's not worth that people will not fast on that day just because they are saying it's a sunnah, leave it, skip it. Uh, yes, it's a sunnah and it's not mandatory upon you, but you can just imagine the reward that you will get and I will get if we fast on that day, which is less than few hours only. So this is number one. What else we can do, as you said, we can get closer to Allah Almighty with all the actions of worship. Uh, Quran, Dua, Dhikr, you know, uh, the Dhikr means the remembrance of Allah Almighty, whatever it could be, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, glorifying Allah, magnifying Allah, praising Allah, uh, saying Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. Anything you will say on that day, Allah Almighty will forgive because the Prophet, peace be upon him, told us that on that day Allah Almighty descends at the first heaven and he will look into his slaves. Imagine Allah is looking at me and you on that day only only on that day he is just looking and he is waiting for me and you and any one of us to say astaghfirullah ya Rab. oh Allah I forgive I ask your forgiveness oh Allah I repent oh Allah I ask seek your repentance anything you will do make sure that Allah Almighty definitely will forgive you so don't take it lightly you know that day the day of Arafah Jazakallah uh, Khair Sheikh Muhammad you are giving me and uh, giving our dear viewers also great information about the day of Arafah and we would like to know also about the Arafat uh, prayer and the best time and the best dua in Arafat day. So the day of Arafat entirely, it is the, the whole day, as I said. Uh, I cannot give you a specific hour because it's the whole day, basically. Yes, on Friday we have hadith, we have the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that he says there is one hour on Friday that Allah accepts the dua. So, so make sure you make dua properly. And some of the ulama, based on hadith, they says, okay, it is after Asr, until Maghrib, until the end of the day. Some, some people say it is the day of Jum'ah when the Imam goes on the mimbar, on the pulpit. So there are like, you know, one specific hour when Allah Almighty accept the dua. On Arafah, it is an, like an open check, like check without, without, you know, number in it, you know. So you can fill it as much as you want, morning, evening, but the day of Arafah. Don't wait until it's night. Or don't you know do it when it's uh, you know if it's not the day of Arafah you don't do it like earlier one day no day of Arafah I would say don't sit on your laptop don't sit on your devices turn off your mobile if you can it is something from Allah Almighty it is the day of forgiveness it is the day that you cannot even imagine what Allah will give you if you just sit for five minutes and say astaghfirullah oh Allah forgive me oh Allah I did a lot of things and we all do actually we are all you know uh, sinners as a prophet peace be upon him said yes. Kullu ibn Adam khatta. all the okay. children of Adam they make mistakes so if I just sit by myself even in the car not necessarily you be you have to be in the masjid or you have to be in a, in a mosque or in a place you know sit with yourself in your place and just say Ya Allah I made a mistake forgive me Ya Allah make me to be among the good people Ya Allah give me a good company whatever you ask Allah Almighty Definitely Allah will give you. Uh, such a great opportunity in the day of Arafah, Sheikh Muhammad. Mm -hmm. And we would like to know also the day of Arafah, the day after it is also uh, special to all the Muslims uh, around the world. And everyone will be uh, like uh, happy and visiting their families and friends and relatives, which is uh, the Eid al-Abha al-Mubarak. So Eid al-Abha, uh, it's like a great celebration. So will you please tell us uh, about Eid al-Abha? Definitely. Now you said Eid al-Abha and, and uh, this is obviously for me and for you and for maybe our Arab brothers and sisters is, is common. But let's say those, uh, uh, you know, uh, non-Arabs and English speakers, they might say, what, what this guy the just said, you know, what, what is Eid al-Abha? What, what's going on here? So I would like to make it clear for the, you know, dear viewers that, okay, Eid means festival. Eid means the day of joy. Eid means uh, some a day that you celebrate. You you know you have fun with your family and, and friends and whatsoever. Then the next word, the second word, uh, which means the festival. You can say festival Eid. Uh, then you have Adha, or you have Futr. Eid al Adha and Eid al Futr because we have two Eids in Islam. Uh, Adha coming from the word Udhiya, which means slaughtering. Sacrifice. You know slaughtering. So on this Eid we slaughter, and the other Eid. Eid al-Fitr, 
Futr coming from the word iftar, futur, uh, uh, you know, the, the word means, which means, you know, when you eat, you know, it's breaking called iftar, your breaking your fast. Yeah. So, and Allah Almighty gave us as Muslims two great Eids after two great occasions. So one occasion of Ramadan, and as you know, Ramadan, it's a different environment. Praying, salah, uh, dua, supplication, Quran, your attachment with Allah is different, your iman is, your, your, your spiritual level is completely different. And then after all this ibadah for 30 days or 29 days, Allah gave you the celebration day. Now this is the celebration. No celebration because the day, uh, the, the Eid is done uh, or the Ramadan is done. So no, no, we are happy. No, no. We, f we feel happy that, Ya Allah, our deeds are accepted. You know, we are hoping that our deeds are accepted. So we're happy. So this is regarding the Eid al-Fitr, you know. Now coming to the Eid al-Adha, slaughtering, Eid al-Adha. Again, it's, uh, and by the way, many people, many people, they have no idea that Eid al-Adha, the, the second day of, or the first day after the Arafah day, it is more significant day than Arafah. Many people they have no idea about it. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, Afdal yawm, yawm nahr The best of exactly. the day throughout the year, not even, you know, Ramadan. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said the best day, Yawm nahr when you slaughter your animal. So this also the day you enjoy with your family, do halal fun, you know, you f have fun with your family, enjoy yourself and do everything which is halal, you know, permissible in Islam. As well, don't forget the ibadah as well. Like people sometimes too much into entertainment and fun and family gathering and this and that. So they might skip their prayer. They might skip something, you know, beneficial, uh, maybe doing some, you know, any good work, charity whatsoever. So this is the day that also Allah is uh, accepting any deeds that a person might do. So this is the, the day that also we have to uh, take care of. Exactly. Uh, well said, uh, Sheikh Muhammad. And also there are a lot of people wondering, uh, especially uh, non-Arab uh, speakers or people who just embraced uh, Islam, about why do Muslims sacrifice on Eid al-Adha? Mm. What is the story behind it? Oh, mashallah. The story is deep and I'll try to make it short as much as possible. So the story behind sacrificing, you know, the animal, why we sacrifice, as you said, you know, even by the way, Muslims, sometimes they have no idea. Exactly. They, they, they're born and they, they say, okay, my father every year, he brings a sheep and, and, and then they're Speci slaughtering. Especially children. Uh, children, okay. Yeah. And they grow up and they have no idea what is the story behind it. So the story behind it, as I said, our, the, uh, they call it the father of all the prophets, Abu al-Anbiya, the father of all the prophets, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Abraham, peace be upon him. He is the one who uh, established this. So when, you, now you can imagine, he's a father, uh, sorry, he's, he's a prophet of eight years old. Eight years old, no son, no daughter, no one. Then Allah Almighty gave him the glad tiding that he will be blessed with son. So imagine now, now we know the feeling of being a father. Imagine being a father at the age of 80, right? All these years, 10, 20, okay, not 20, but let's say 10, but say 20, 30, 40, all the way until 80, no son, nothing. Then you've been uh -huh. giving a glad tiding from Allah Almighty that you will be blessed by son. So Allah blessed him with son, Ibrahim. Uh, so Ibrahim, Ismail, Ismail. Ismail. He was so happy and he was the most beloved. And me and you and everyone will think, you know, once you have the son, he is the one who will take my name uh, or he will be taking care of uh, our family. He is the one who will take care of my legacy or whatsoever that I'm doing and he will carry on. He is the one who will carry my name after his name. Many things, you know, dream, you exactly. know, we we'll keep dreaming, you know, my son, my son, my son. Same thing with Ibrahim alayhi salam. So for almost six, seven, eight years, he was with him, teaching him, uh, giving him all the good uh, akhlaq and manners and, and upbringing until one day Prophet Ibrahim peace be upon him he was sleeping and he saw a dream that he is slaughtering his son so he woke up he is like confused sweating nervous like what I just saw but he definitely knew that what he saw it is a revelation from Allah Almighty because the dreams of the prophets are revelation it's not exactly. just a dream just a, something fiction so he realized that this is a commandment from Allah Almighty but he is sad, but he wants to fulfill. At the end, he is the one who submits to Allah Almighty exactly. all the time. So he went to his son. Imagine, he is now thinking all this, what I told you. My son taking care of my, me after or my... Uh, eight after 80 years, years yeah. imagine. So, so, you know, I'm okay, I'm getting old, so my son. And then suddenly after six, seven, eight years, the commands come from Allah Almighty, slaughter him. 
So he takes his son and he says, uh, as, uh, as it's in the Quran, إِنِّي أَرَى فِي الْمَنَامِ إِنِّي أَدْبَحُكَ I see in my dream that I am slaughtering you. فَانْظُرْ مَاذَا تَرَى What you see, my son? Now see the tarbiyah, the good upbringing. He didn't say, Father, are you crazy? Why are you talking to me like this? Uh, why, what do you mean you will kill me? He didn't say anything. He is also having iman. A little six, seven exactly. years old kid. He says, يَا أَبَتِي إِفْعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ Oh my father, do what you've been commanded. Imagine that little boy have understanding that it was a commandment from Allah Almighty. He didn't say it's just a dream. Don't take it seriously, my father. It's just a dream. <laughs> no, no. He says, no, no. إِفْعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ Do what exactly Allah told you to do. So he took him and he is like, you know, crying, but he says, I have to fulfill. He took him all the way to the behind the, behind the uh, mountain and he took the knife and he just about to slaughter him. So Allah Almighty informed Ibrahim, Ya Ibrahim, an saddaqta ru'ya. Oh Ibrahim, you fulfilled the commandment that Allah told you in the dream. So no, you don't need to slaughter him now. In fact, it says also in the hadith or in the narration that he is slaughtering, he is slaughtering and, and the knife is not working. He brings a piece of wood, he puts it on it and he cuts it, the wood cuts into two. He puts it back on, Ibra uh, on Ismail's neck, cutting it, and Allah commands the, the knife not to work. So he was confused. Then Allah Almighty said, An You fulfilled the commandment of Allah Almighty. Then Allah Almighty says, take your son away, bring a sheep and slaughter a sheep. So from that time, Muhammad alayhi salam, peace be upon him, he is the one who did it. And then the companion and the other people did, did it. And we are also doing it. And this is, this is the feeling actually that, you know, we have to feel that, you know, it was, it was the son of Ibrahim. And alhamdulillah, Allah said it. No, it's not now. And it's the uh, sheep or a cow or it could be any cattle. Yeah. So this is, the, this is the whole story behind Such it. Such a great uh, story, Sheikh Mohammed. And also, will you please tell us about the best things to do in Eid al-Abha? Of course, we know uh, the slaughtering of uh, the Udhiyya yes. or the sacrifice. And we would like to know more about the best things to do in Eid. Definitely. Eid, first of all, uh, after slaughtering, of course, slaughtering, again, it's not mandatory. It's not obligatory. Uh, if you are able and capable to do, you can do. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, told us when you do it, then, then uh, it has to be in three uh, portions. It means one portion you eat from it, one portion you give it to your family and needy people, and the third portion you can keep it with you, like you know, store it for upcoming days or upcoming weeks. Now also some people uh, make mistake that when it says three portion, it has to be equal. No, it has to, it's not. For example, the sheep, the meat I have, it's 20 kg. So it's not that, uh, you know, I have to make it like, or 30 kg, so I have to make it 10, 10, 10. So 10 I will eat and I will cook and 10 I will distribute and 10 I will keep it. No, it's three portion. I might take one kilo and then distribute 29 kilos, for example, you know, or, or things like that. So it's not with, with a certain amount. It's three things. You eat from it, you give, and you store. You know, this is, the, this is the one of the sunnah that we have to also revive and apply. What else you can do? Any khair, any good, you want to do it, do it. Some people, uh, they, as I said, they take it lightly. They are trying their best the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, fasting, reading Quran, as we know, they are significant days. Uh, the day of Arafah, they are fasting. But immediately, that second day, the day of Eid, you know, they might do things which is not pleasing to Allah Almighty. So we say, no, All, also that day of Eid, as we say, ayyam, ayyam al-Nahr, the best of the days, the day of uh, Eid, when you slaughter. So do meeting family members, even those that you are cut off with. And this is unfortunately something common happening worldwide, not only in, in, in a certain place or certain country, that for simple disagreement between Muhammad and my brother Muhammad, wallahi, you want to do something, I want to do something else, we disagree, Khalas, I'm not going to talk to Muhammad, uh, I will going to block him, or yeah. I will not going to answer his phone call. For, for what, you know, you know the, the brotherhood is, is more important than an argument. Uh, cutting off is, is useless and it is more important to have this kinship of brotherhood, kinship of friendship or whatsoever, than just having these silly things that comes from the shaitan and cut off between a brother exactly. and a sister or a brother or a, or, a, or a parents or whosoever. So this is the time where Allah loves when you go you knock the door of your brother or your relative, you meet him, you call him, you send him a message. So these are the things that you can do 
and inshallah ta'ala you can get closer to Allah Almighty. So ibadah, family relation, family kinship, all these things are really important. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Sheikh Muhammad. Uh, Jazakallah khair for yeah. the precious information you shared with us regarding the day of Arafah and also Eid al-Abha al-Mubarak. We wish you in advance, inshallah, Eid Mubarak. And may Allah bless you and everyone, uh, all the Muslims all around the world. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having thank us. You. Thank you. The viewers we just had with us, Sheikh Muhammad al naqawi international da'wah trainer. Let's go now to our second report of the evening and we will be right back. Stay tuned. <laughs>